Have you ever wondered why Nazi Germany and the USSR, two seemingly disparate entities, initially found common ground during World War II? As strange as it may seem, these two polar opposites, one espousing the Aryan superiority and the other, the proletariat's liberation, discovered a shared interest that led to the infamous Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact. This non-aggression treaty, signed in 1939, provided a strategic respite for both powers, allowing them to focus on their respective western and eastern fronts. A secret protocol to this pact partitioned Poland, a sovereign nation caught in the crossfire of their ambitions. This division of Poland was a pragmatic move, a temporary truce between two predators waiting for the opportune moment to strike. The peoples under the Soviet yoke, especially those in the territories occupied briefly by the Soviets between 1939 and 41, saw a glimmer of hope in the German armies. Yet this uneasy alliance was not destined to last. 1941 marked a dramatic shift in the relationship between Nazi Germany and the USSR. As the German war machine turned its sights eastwards, a new chapter in the Second World War began to unfold. This was Operation Barbarossa, Hitler's audacious plan to invade the Soviet Union and seize control of its vast resources. Hitler had several reasons for launching this operation. He saw the Soviet Union as a significant threat to Germany's domination of Europe. Moreover, the ideological differences between fascism and communism were irreconcilable. By invading the USSR, Hitler hoped to destroy communism at its source. Another motivation was the vast resources that the Soviet Union possessed. Hitler believed that the capture of these resources, particularly the oil fields of the Caucasus, would fuel Germany's war effort and secure its future as a dominant global power. Operation Barbarossa, launched in June 1941, was initially a resounding success for the German forces. They pushed deep into Soviet territory, capturing vast swathes of land and inflicting heavy casualties on the Red Army. The German forces were aided by the element of surprise and the Soviet Union's initial lack of preparedness for such a massive invasion. But the relationship between Nazi Germany and the local population was complex. While some saw the Germans as liberators from Soviet oppression, others viewed them with suspicion and hostility. This was particularly true in the territories occupied briefly by the Soviets between 1939 and 1941. Despite the harsh treatment they often received from the Germans, many of these people considered the communist regime a greater evil. As the German forces advanced further into the USSR, they found themselves facing increasingly fierce resistance. The Soviet people, spurred by a combination of fear, patriotism, and hatred for their invaders, began to fight back with a ferocity that surprised the German high command. But this invasion would ignite a fierce resistance from the Soviet Union. The tide of the war was about to turn, setting the stage for some of the bloodiest and most decisive battles of the Second World War. In the midst of this conflict, the Ruthenians found themselves in a precarious position. The Ruthenians, predominantly Greek Catholic Ukrainians living within the interwar borders of Poland and Czechoslovakia, had managed to cultivate a vibrant national identity. This identity was underpinned by the flourishing Greek Catholic Church, led by the charismatic Metropolitan Andrei Septyski, which served as a beacon of Ukrainian nationalism. As the German forces descended upon the USSR, many Ruthenians decided to throw their lot in with Germany. The Organization of Ukrainian Nationalists, or OUN, led by Andrei Melnik and Stepan Bandera, pledged unwavering support to Germany. The Ruthenians' condition was straightforward. They would support Germany if Germany would aid in the establishment of an independent Ukrainian state. Metropolitan Septyski too urged the Ruthenians to rise against the atheistic communism. In the face of these promises and urgings, the Ruthenians were hopeful. They believed that aligning with Germany could finally bring about the independent Ukraine they had long yearned for. However, the Germans had other plans. Despite their promises, they did nothing to facilitate the establishment of an independent Ukrainian state. The Ruthenians, who had placed their trust in Germany, were left in a lurch. Not only were they still under the yoke of an oppressor, but they also found themselves on the losing side of the war. The Ruthenians' plight didn't end there. The Catholic Church, in its attempt to ensure the survival of its faithful, refrained from taking a clear political stance. This stance, or lack thereof, was viewed by many as tacit complicity in Nazi crimes. The Ruthenians, caught between their religious leadership and their political aspirations, found themselves in an increasingly untenable situation. 
The Ruthenians' hopes for independence were dashed as the tide of war turned again. Their dreams of a free Ukraine, which had seemed within reach just a few years earlier, were once again relegated to the realm of impossibility. And thus, the Ruthenians' dilemma persisted, their dreams of independence remaining just that, dreams. The final years of the war marked a dramatic reversal for Nazi Germany. As the tide of conflict began to turn, the Soviet Union launched a relentless counteroffensive, pushing back the previously invincible German armies. It was a time of intense conflict and struggle, where the stakes were higher than ever. The Soviet counteroffensive was not only a military success, but a psychological one as well. It shattered the illusion of Nazi invincibility, turning the momentum of the war in favor of the Allies. However, this victory didn't come without a heavy price. Both sides suffered enormous losses, the human cost was staggering, and the material devastation was beyond comprehension. In this brutal struggle, the peoples of Eastern Europe, like the Ruthenians, found themselves caught between two opposing forces. Their dreams of independence and freedom were crushed under the weight of war, their lands turned into battlegrounds. They were victims of an ideological war they didn't start, but were forced to endure. When the dust settled, the Soviet Union emerged victorious, but the scars of conflict were deep. Nazi Germany's defeat marked the end of a dark chapter in human history, but it also initiated the beginning of a new era. The relationship between Nazi Germany and the USSR was forever altered, laying the groundwork for the Cold War and reshaping the geopolitical landscape. Thus, World War II reshaped the relationship between Nazi Germany and the USSR, leaving a lasting legacy on the world stage. So what can we take away from this complex relationship during World War II? The tale begins with a non-aggression pact, abruptly broken by the German invasion of the USSR. The Ruthenians, caught in the crossfire, grappled with alliances, their plight representing the larger struggle of Eastern Europe during this period. As the war ended, the aftermath revealed a landscape forever changed. Indeed, the relationship between Nazi Germany and the USSR during World War II was fraught with complexities and contradictions, providing a fascinating study in the unpredictable nature of global politics.